morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Yes, happy Saturday. So, um, it's Carla Nicole up and Adam this morning. <laughs> Actually, I've been up since four, but no big deal. Uh, but anyway, hope everyone is doing wonderful this beautiful Saturday morning. Um, so <clears throat> right now I'm just making some cucumber salad. Um, and I thought I would talk about something that I think I kind of touched base on a little bit the other day about, um, being, um, aware that a man's potential does not always seem to be, um, highlighted as a good thing to think about when you are, uh, looking for a love affair or looking for a partner to be with. And so, um, I guess I wanted to just kind of touch base on how to be a man's, uh, his asset. Good morning, Natasha. His asset. Okay. So here's the, here's what's something that's very important. I think, um, I'm going to use an analogy. Good morning, Hassan. I'm going to use an analogy, um, where you and your man, this is just an analogy. You and your man are in a boat. Okay. And, um, you're in a boat and, um, he is, you know, he's rowing it. He's rowing the boat. He's rowing the boat. And the difference between a woman that is an asset to this, this ride of life that he's in, um, is based upon if the woman is just sitting there and enjoying the ride, not really adding anything to it, not checking to make sure there's no cracks, not seeing what she can do to help, um, lessen the struggle of the, of the rose. Um, is she adding to the rose or is she just sitting there and enjoying the ride? <laughs> okay. I want y'all to get this because this is very, very important in relationships. Sometimes we as women don't realize that we can be riding in his boat but not really giving him any real help, <laughs> assistance, um, problem shooting, uh, I'm saying problem solving and troubleshooting, or, or are we just riding? Are we just riding to see what he's doing and really not helping to make the ride more enjoyable? Are we checking for cracks? Are we checking for holes? Are we looking to see what we can do to help the ride go a bit smoother? Are we checking to see if the weather is okay? Um, are we looking for icebergs? You know, all of these things in this ride of life with the mate, you know, a lot of times uh, we as women have not been encouraged to be an asset to the, to the ride. Okay. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I see a lot of times where the biggest frustration with men uh, in my coaching practice they feel as though they're doing all of the work and they, um, they're with a partner that's really not uh, an asset. <clears throat> now, does that mean that the woman isn't a help? She may be, but she's not an asset to help the mission, to move things in motion, to help problem solve, to give him some information or be beneficial to him. And so, um, I'm, I'm just talking about this from a perspective of trying to help women to see that our feminine power can really inspire and really make a difference in how well that man you're in a relationship with, how well your um, vitality, your involvement of making things happen really helps. Um, when you're riding in a boat and you're not helping him row it, you're just sitting there. It's a weight that you're putting on the boat that you could be helping him to move in a better fashion. So I wanted to give you guys something that I think is very important. We need to realize that a man's vision, his dreams, his things he's trying to do and accomplish can be brought to life when you are involved, ladies. We are major assets in the drive of our man, of our lover, of our mate. We are major assets. Listen, we bring life. And I said this the other day, 
we bring life, but outside of bringing life, we also can help to encourage him that he's making good decisions. We can encourage him to make the decisions to be more um, thought about. Um, we, we can even have him, he needs to sometimes bounce off of us because sometimes men are all about the numbers and all about this and all about that. But sometimes we're like, well, wait a minute. Are you thinking about this? What about that? And sometimes we as women can actu actually branch him into a different horizon of understanding some things. So I think it's important that we as women understand we have a power in making this man become the best version of himself, whether we want to admit it or not. Um, we uh, a lot of times have been taught, you know, these are all th messages that we get as young girls that a man's going to take care of you. A man is going to provide you with all you need. A man is going to do this and do that. But we really never have been given the fact that we have just as much power, if not more, because I talk about how um, we can protect our mate as women. We can be someone that can see things that maybe he can't because we're women. So we have a certain level of intuition, if you will, if, it, if it's, let me just put this out here. Intuition, meaning we're able to see certain things, not in a suspicious state, but we're able to see some things that maybe he can't see. So these are also protection and protect, protective devices that we have as women. When we step into a relationship, we come with. So um, I wanted to also say that it's important that we realize that. I'm doing my cucumbers. Like I said, I'm doing my cucumber salad this morning. So, um, <laughs> so it's very important that we realize that as a woman, <clears throat> we do come with something. We don't have to just reap everything a man sows. Listen, we also have our own gifts and talents and things of that nature that a lot of times I think we as women just think, well, we're beautiful, so we should have everything this man is offering. We should receive all of the benefits for being with a fabulous, hot, successful, um, rich <laughs> man. But do you know what that comes with? I was watching Kevin Hart yesterday. I was cracking up. He told his wife. His wife says, well, honey, you ain't really putting it down in the bedroom like you used to. He said, now, which one do you want? Do you want the good D or do you want this life? You can't get both. So what do you want? I laughed about it, but it's facts. You know, a man that's on his mission, you're not going to get all that lovemaking you was getting in the beginning because he's focused. He's 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 on a mission. He's 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 trying to uh reap right now so you have to sit back and say okay well we'll catch up on that later but what can i do to make this mission more essential to make this mission more fabulous because of me being a part of the mission so i think that's important so we as women have the listen we as women have a power we can either break the mission and kill it because of what our own inhibitions or we have a little jealousy well i don't like all them women at you i don't really like all them women liking you and wanting to be all in your space and stuff and i'm gonna talk to these women about you being mine and okay but uh <laughs> you are killing the mission ma'am <laughs> while you're doing all of that fussing and complaining about how fabulous your man is and a woman is at him you are creating a whole nother level of what barriers to get that man to the next level he has to be sexy he has to be debonair he has to be sharp he has to interact with beautiful women that's what it is it's what it comes with when you want to help this man to be the best version of himself <sighs> so what i wanted to talk about with being an asset to a man is we not only um focus on him um, achieving the goals, but we also have to have our own goals. We also have to have our own desires. We also have to get our own because yes, it's a wonderful thing to have a man supply everything. But one thing that I learned from my mom, she was very independent. Uh, my dad, she didn't have to work for nothing. My dad provided everything to her. But one thing that I learned from my mom is she was like, no, <laughs> I appreciate all of that, but I got to get mine. 
You know, I got to be independent. I want my own bank account, you know. And my parents are older, so my mom and dad was like, you know, they were older school. You know what I'm saying? So my mom was like, no, I love you and all. And I appreciate all that you're giving me and all that. But I need my own stuff. <laughs> I need my own independence. And, and here's the thing. A lot of men, and I tell you guys this all the time, men will step to me all the time and be like, what are you doing, girl? You know, hey, I want I want to get with you and all this stuff. It's like, I appreciate that and all, but, you know, I'm on my mission. I'm on my independence. I'm on getting my stuff. I'm on getting this bag. I'm doing what I need to do to take care of me. And I have had more men turned off by that because, oh, uh, well, uh, whatever, you know, they get all in their feelings. It's like, Hey, I'm not going to stop loving me and getting this bag because you feel some type of way about it. I'm not going to do that. That's just not me. So with that understanding, we as women have to know that interdependence is where we come together in a union with a lover that has his own. Okay. When you have your own, he has his own and you mesh together. There is no, there is no, you know, all this back and forth and, and aggravation with each other because you both are coming to the table with something. Hey, I got mine. You got yours. Let's do the damn thing. So when we are, like I said, when your man is in the boat and he's rowing that boat, he's rowing that boat, he's doing everything he can in his power to get, get where he needs to be. And like I said, you sitting there pretty because I'm pretty and <laughs> I mean, I'm a beautiful woman and I've been taught that all my pretty gets me whatever I need. That don't mean nothing. Pretty don't pay the bills. <laughs> pretty isn't going to help him with building what he needs to make the things that he wants to become. It's not going to help. So what do you come to the table with, ladies? It's very important we understand this because if we don't, it's very easy to be in a relationship with a man. And he provides you everything. You don't think that comes with a cost? <laughs> you don't think he's going to be controlling? <laughs> you don't think he's going to be telling his demands? And since you're getting all this, I need you to do this, 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 and this. You don't think that comes with a, a, a price? You don't think that comes with a cost? Everything we do comes with a price. So we have to be mindful that... We, in order to make sure that you are balanced in your relationship, that means you're coming to, to the table with something and he's coming to the table with something and you're well balanced, like a meal. Um, <laughs> you'll find out like, oh my God, he, he appreciates me. I'm not taking for granted. I'm not even, he's not even going to try to sit around and try to control me because he knows that I'm an asset to what he's trying to build. So because he knows I'm an asset of what, of what he's trying to build, He's now excited about that. He's now wanting to spend more time with me about that. You feel what I'm saying? Well, well, like she said, she says she's guilty in the past of that. Right. Because we have been taught as women, men are going to pamper us. Men are going to take care of us. And unfortunately, that fallacy has cost us more pain than not. So we're thinking he's going to take care of me. He's going to love on me and make love to me all the time. And he's going to do this and that. And you're going to find out that's not reality. If you want a man, and most of us do, handsome, well off, nice cars, you know, all of this stuff. And, and, a, and a high position in his job so we can brag about it. You think he's at home, honey? He's not. <laughs> You love that house so much, well, well, damn it, you better really love it because you're going to be in it alone a lot. See, I got all these lessons early. I, I was like in my early 20s when I had, had a man, you know, I had moved all out of state to be with my ex-husband and I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that. Now, granted, I was a woman that really wasn't in her purpose yet, but I was seeking to find like, how can I, how can I help him, if you will? But, but I found out, yeah, at 26 years old, I was in a $125,000 house. My husband would come in with, with all kinds of outfits and I had three cars from him by the time we got married. I had all of that. Diamonds and all this. I had that. But also I lost myself because I found out that all of that that I was getting, <laughs> I lost because not necessarily because we we didn't have what we needed, but 
I realized that that house I was in, I was in by my damn self a lot, <laughs> a lot. And um, because I was kind of young and naive and stuff, you know, he, he wanted to lay down the laws. You feel what I'm saying? Because, hey, I'm making all this bait. You know, you need to do this. You need to do that. And I'm running around. Oh, okay. What do I need? What do you want? <laughs> Come on now. If y'all ladies don't know what I'm talking about, I, I know <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about here. Now, listen to me. It's wonderful to have an affluent man and all of that. But if you want that, you better be that in your own right, because it comes with a lot of responsibility. It comes with a lot of responsibility. When you're with an affluent man or with a powerful man or with a very well-off man, or he's a very focused and driven man, you're going to have a lot of responsibility to take care of, not just for, for him, but for yourself as well. And most times, if you notice, pay attention now, look at the cut, look at the couples that a lot of people look up to, right? I want to have a Jay-Z. I want to have a Barack Obama. Look at Barack and Michelle. They're so hot and sexy and okay. But understand something. They're power couple. They're a power couple which means they have equal power in their own rights. They're interdependent, which means they have their own independence in themselves. They have their own drive to do what they need to do for themselves. And then they have an interdependence with each other. So they have this meshing, if you will, the meshing of lives to where there's a goal, there's a center goal, there's individual goals. So Michelle had her own goal. She supported Barack and did everything for him when he was in his president state and doing this and doing that for Barack. But if you notice now, after Barack left, she ended up getting her own stuff. She ended up doing her own thing. She wrote a whole book and all of that. So did she lose herself in his president in his presidential uh, time? No. She just knew that she was going to be, okay, this is where we're at in our relationship. I'm going to have to kind of put my stuff to the side for a minute, not to give up on myself or my goals or what I need to do, but I'm going to set this aside so we as a family unit can grow and build what we're trying to do for you so that you can become successful, right? That applies in all relationships. <laughs> Not just Barack, not just Jay-Z and Beyonce, not just the hot couples that we all want in our lives. It applies in your real human life. Only difference between these power couples is they have media. People see what they're doing. You can tell Barack and Michelle make a lot of love to each other. You can tell, you can see it. There's no faking to it. You can see it. It's easy to be seen. But that comes from a... a, a just a beautiful harmony between the two of them. But it came from them both having their own power within themselves and then together jointly having a power as well. So why I'm saying it's important to be an asset to your lover is because you come to the table with something, period, as a woman. And I always talk about this, and you guys know I'm going to go right back to it. You can't have a beautiful, loving, solid relationship if you're not having a beautiful, solid relationship with you. We have to know ourselves. <laughs> we have to know ourselves first. We have to know what we need. We also have to know what we want. We also have to know how we are driven in our life. What moves us? How do we feel about certain things? So sometimes, because we never know when love is going to show up, sometimes we aren't really um, balanced in our self-love, okay? And I think I better talk about this. We might not be balanced in our self-love. We might, we might love self, right? But we might not be balanced yet. So now a man comes into your life and oh my God, he's sexy, he's hot, he's beautiful, we're making lots of love and everything's good, everything's wonderful, right? But hold up though, you skipped something, <laughs> you skipped loving you. So now you're spending a lot of time loving all on this man and stuff and that's a beautiful thing, trust and believe, it is a beautiful thing to have a lot of love making and intimacy and stuff, that's beautiful. But if you... <laughs> 
are not loving you. Fulfilled, fulfilled love with yourself and balancing that and making sure you're good and you're trying to love on a man, you're going to lose yourself every time. Because he now takes precedence over your own love of you. So now you're tripping over yourself to make sure he's happy and you're going and doing things for him and you're trying to make sure he's good and, and what does he need and all this other stuff. And all of that is okay. However, you are now absent in your drive towards making sure that the you, that yourself is good. Have you checked on your mental health? <laughs> How are you feeling up here? Because as long as you're focused on him, you're not paying attention to your own mental health. What are you saying in your silent thoughts to yourself? Well, I do love him and all that, but I'm not really where I need to be. I don't think that I'm actually deserving of this man because I'm not where I need to be. And so guess what happens? Now this is real shit. So make sure you share this video because this is real shit right here I'm about to say. You will spend a lot of time <laughs> chasing in behind him, sacrificing self, okay? And then guess what happens? You end up feeling like you're not you're not really an asset. Now, you bring on you becoming a liability because of what you say to you. Because you've been so busy focusing on him and you and you put yourself and sacrificed yourself. So now you're like, all these other women are at him. Oh my God, he's so professional and women are all around him. And now I don't feel I'm sufficient enough to match these other women. This is real shit. Women get upset about this shit all the time. Well, why is she talking to you? And oh, really? Well, who's this woman? And who's that woman? This is real stuff. Okay, and now the reason why you are now filled with insecurity because you did not make sure that your self-love was in balance. Self-love requires for you to take all that energy and time you do on that man on you. In a relationship, not in a relationship, in a situation, in an entanglement, whatever you're in, <laughs> you have to make sure that your self-love is in the balance. If it's not, you're going to find out that you are now feeling uncomfortable in this union. Because now you're feeling like, oh, I'm not good enough for him. You think for a half a second that women's insecurities aren't destroying relationships, you're dead wrong. They are. And they're, they're destroying the relationships. Their insecurities within themselves is destroying their relationships because they don't feel like they are valuable to themselves because they're not doing what they need to be doing to be the excellent supreme self. And the only way you can become supreme, you have to read, you have to meditate, you have to seek to find what your real purpose in life is. You have to start to really explore your in intimate gifts inside. You've got to start to explore those gifts. People compliment us all the time, right? On stuff we're good at. Girl, you are such a good singer. Or man, you can cook a meal or whatever. And we downplay it, right? Oh, it's nothing. Oh, it's easy. I can do it with my eyes closed. That's your gift. <laughs> I just gave you a nugget right there. If somebody tells you you're good at something and you just downplay it like it ain't nothing, it is something. It's your gift. And if you perfect that gift... There's no way you can be insecure about a damn thing, about a person, about anybody. Because now you're supreme in yourself because you're focusing on improving that gift, mastering that gift. We go to college to get master's degrees, right? Go there, rush to get these master's degrees. And when we come out of the master's degree, what are we mastering? Are we using what we're learning? <laughs> no, most times we're not. But you master your gift though. If you master your gift, listen, your purpose will be so, so clear because now you're doing what you're natural at doing and now you are finding why you're so good at it. That's, it's just that simple. 
So when you are in your purpose and driven and into you and loving you and, and focusing on how you are improving yourself, you meet a man in his self and he's on his self mission and doing what he needs to do. Listen to me. A man is going to find you irresistible every time. I gave you some nuggets. You better share this video. I gave you some serious raw truths and nuggets. Keep it up. I'm telling you, a lot of women have sacrificed themselves to make sure that that man is good. Focusing so much on him, she loses self every time. I don't know how many clients come to me. Yeah, Carla, I did lose myself. Yeah, I did lose myself. No, you know what you didn't do is you sacrificed yourself. You didn't lose it. You're always going to be you. <laughs> but you sacrificed yourself to make sure that you don't lose this man. And in the midst of that, you lost you. <laughs> it's like, no, baby girl, you cannot do that. You're going to find yourself really frustrated and really disheartened in your life. So no matter if you get a um, Bob the Builder, <laughs> you get a Tyrese Gibson, you get a Genuine, whatever fine man you just can't, it is just irresistible in your head and you get him and meet him and he is into you, right? And you focus all your energy on him and keeping him. You're going to find yourself losing him because you're going to lose you. That's why that is the, this is the real raw truth about why we are out of balance in relationships. We're out of balance because we are not loving ourselves. If you want a man to love you and honor you and cherish you and all of those things, it doesn't just come. It comes because of how you love you first. I can't get this out enough, ladies. You have to love you first. F what a man is going to do. <laughs> and I love men. Get it. I Listen. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I have to love me first. So if I'm loving me and having a badass love affair with myself, honey, listen. Men can change their mind. Men can come in. They can go out. Men can be with you and not with you. Men can be with you right now and here. And then somebody else entertain. Listen. <laughs> if your self-love is not balanced. You're going to lose yourself and lose your thirst for life every time, every time. So how we become assets is by how we love ourselves. And like I said earlier, how do you love you? You love you by doing what? By making sure you are focused on why you are here on the planet. And then wait a minute. Like I said, stop down plan. I don't know how many women has said, Girl, you are so good at cooking or you are so good at singing. You've got a beautiful voice. Oh my God, look at your poetry. I can't, I, who paints like this? You just do an amazing job. And we say, oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. That doesn't mean anything. It, it, it comes with, comes to me so easily. That's, that's nothing. It is something. That's your gift. And like I said, master that f a master plan f a master degree master your gift when you master your gifts and you get it sharpened and you take that time with that gift and you focus on the, that gift you eat drink and sleep that gift you try to figure out how do you get who else has a gift similar to that so you can see how they improve theirs so you can improve yours start to dr get driven by oh my god i'm learning about me i'm learning something about myself i didn't know when you do this kind of stuff, you are then an asset to a man rather than a liability. Because let me tell you something. You get with a powerful man and you begin to have those insecure thoughts and you start to fill your heart and soul with jealousy, envy, um, anger, bitterness. You'll find out that those relationships will become destroyed. And now you're no longer an asset to him. You're now a liability. The reason you're a liability is because now you're focusing merely on, I don't want him to have all of this because I don't feel equipped enough to be in a relationship with him and, and who I am now. And let me tell you something. We're not always going to show up in a man's life and be 100% where we need to be. Newsflash, we're not. 
we're going to have still moments of growth moments of things we need to work on moments of challenges moments of disappointments moments of things we do and are not successful with that's going to happen period i don't care how good you think you are as a woman you're going to have those moments those seasons where things just can't, aren't clicking aren't getting where you want them to be and in those seasons though you still want to not focus on the things that are going wrong because if you stay focused on that you'll you'll start to lose your motivation to be um, focused on mastering your gifts so what you do in those times is you start to really focus on how do I improve myself I understand right now I'm having challenges I understand right now I'm going through a season that I'm not really where I need to be what do I need to do here to make sure that even though I have these situ situations I'm okay it is listen listen to me it is okay to reach out to coaches. It is okay to reach out to psychologists, psychiatrists, and say, listen, my mental isn't right. What I'm saying to myself in my heart, mind, and soul is really not positive. I'm saying a lot of ugly things to myself. I'm not, I'm not really truly um, happy with inside me. I'm not truly feeling joy the way I think I should. So in that, that's the time to sit down and really be honest with yourself and learn that no matter what fine man, what beautiful children you have, what beautiful parents you have, how wonderful your family and your siblings are to you and your girlfriends and your male friends and all that, it doesn't mean a hill of beans if your mental is in the balance, if your mental isn't where it needs to be. It is okay to cry. It is okay to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not here yet, or I feel like I need some assistance in getting to some to a certain point so I can make some moves and so I can do some things better than where I'm at. It is okay. Matter of fact, that's the best time when you're loving yourself and telling your man or telling that handsome dude you're with or whatever. When you tell him, listen, babe, I um I love you. I do. But right now, I need to focus on me. That man, I'm telling you now, when you tell a man, listen, I love you, but I need to focus on me. My mental health isn't where it needs to be. I'm saying a lot of negative inner thoughts to myself. If he allows you to work on you and tells you, don't worry about me. I'm not going anywhere. Work on that. And I'm still here. Then you have a winner. <laughs> then you have a man in your corner. Then you have a man that cares about you. Because it's easy, anybody, nobody's exempt from having moments or mo or seasons in life where they just don't feel happy about who they are or what's going on in their life. There are many times in life, listen, we're going to be here for a long time if God willing, you know. So there's going to be many times where we feel like, man, I'm not sufficient enough. Um, I, I feel like I'm not making it um, the way I really should. And when you're feeling that way, it is okay to be open and honest about that. If you notice recently, even in my writings, even in my videos recently, I've been talking about honesty, honesty in relationships. The reason I'm talking about honesty in relationships is because first we have to be honest with self. Okay. So being honest with, within you to yourself is key. Um, when you're honest and truthful with you, there is absolutely no way you're going to be dishonest in a relationship because you've already practiced how to be honest with yourself. What am I really saying to myself in my silent thoughts? Am I really practicing my meditation like I should? Am I really focusing on some ways to improve my financial health? What am I doing to figure out if my health is better? Am I really focusing on my parenting? Is my parenting needing some, you know, some revisions? These are things we have to do as women, men as well. But as women, we need to self-reflect more. In that self-reflection, it helps us to, to number one, it helps us to be accountable. A lot of people don't want relationships because they don't want to have to be accountable for nothing. <laughs> But I'm very sorry, whether you're in a love relationship or whatever you're in, whether you are on the planet or not, you have to be accountable for something. You can't just go out the door and get in your car and drive up the road and see a stop sign and keep on driving because you and I both know you either get a ticket or you hurt somebody or you hurt yourself. 
So we have to be accountable always. No matter if we want to say, well, I'm not going to be accountable to no man or I ain't going to be accountable to no woman. Are you accountable to something? Because if you're not, you be a homeowner and don't and don't mow your grass. You think the city ain't going to come over here and mow your grass and then send you a bill and then we'll tell you you better pay it. <laughs> There's we have to be accountable always, whether we want to be accountable or not. So why I said that is we also have to be accountable to self. OK, so being accountable to ourselves is key. It's very important. Because we need to tell ourselves, listen, my, um, my emotions aren't right. My emotions are out of balance. I'm not feeling comfortable right now um, emotionally. And I think as women, we have to sit down and really think about, am I emotionally in balance? Because uh, is everything going on? Am I, am I suspicious about everything? Am I feeling some type of way about this and about that? If you are, that means you're out of balance. There's nothing wrong with being upfront and honest to yourself that um, you are not in balance, that you're feeling some type of way, that your mental health needs, needs, uh, um, what do you call it? Like basically needs, you know, it needs fixed. You feel what I'm saying? So it's important that we sit back and say, listen, I love how I am in this relationship with you. I love you to death, but right now mentally i'm having some issues mentally i'm not where i need to be i need to focus on me for a little bit and a real man that loves you will be okay with that trust me matter of fact he'll probably pay for you to go get some help or or seek for some help from some people he knows or he may be the asset you need because we do need to sit down and say you know i'm really not saying some positive things to myself i'm being down on myself you think i didn't have moments where I have been like, I've never had moments of giving up, but I've had moments like, damn, I got, I got, I took a hit or damn, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable. Damn, I'm feeling like I should have done something different or whatever. You know, I've had those moments, which is cool, but it doesn't mean in those moments we should shun ourselves and try to back off from our, our honesty with self. Again, you want a lover you want a man, you want all this beautiful relationship, but you're, you're not being honest and upfront with yourself. Honesty in relationships is the intimacy. That's how you, that's how you really bring true, honest, loving intimacy. When you are open and honest, when you're being open and honest and saying, listen, this is where we're, this is where we're at. This is how we can ride from this point forward i was upset with you about this you know what i love this about what we're doing when you have those conversations and sometimes i say they're uncomfortable conversations but most of the time they're just conversations that need to be had when you have those conversations with your lover you'll find out like oh man it's a new breath of fresh air because now you're having these modes and moments where it, it feels a little uncomfortable for a minute, but then you start to say, but that, but that person was honest with me. But first you have to practice being honest with self. And like I said, stop and listen to your own mindset. Think about some shit that you don't do for yourself. What are you not doing? Are you not doing certain things that you know you should be doing? For instance, are you meditating enough? Like I said earlier, are you making sure you're good? Are you checking in on how are you as a parent? Are there some things you can fix? Let me tell you something. I'm new at being a parent to an adult child. So there's some times when I got to be like, ooh, okay. Uh, she's an adult now, so I can't just tell her what she needs to do. Although sometimes I feel like I should. I can't just tell her what I need to do. So now I have to be a suggestive parent. But I still, but check this out. I still have a son. <laughs> that I still have to be demanding and telling him what to do. So again, now I'm having to what balance. Okay. With my son, I need to be this type of parent with my daughter. I need to be this type of parent, but I need to what master it again. I keep talking about mastery because we don't talk about mastery of self. We talk about mastering everything else. We talk about mastering, uh, going to getting our master's degree, but we're not mastering our feelings at all. We're just not mastering them. We feel some type of way, a type of way about stuff and then we go all left to center. Then we're mad and pissed off and now the relationships are all on the rocks and people are calling me, Carly, can I have an emergency session? My man said this and da, 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 da. I'm like, 
All right. Come on. Let's talk about it. So again, like I said, <laughs> make sure you share this video because it's very important. I gave a lot of nuggets this morning. A lot. Again, like I told you before, it's vitally important that we understand when we come to relationships, we can be an asset as a woman or we can be a liability. I shared with you how to become more of an asset, okay? How do I become more of an asset to myself first? Not based upon how can you become more of an asset to him? Because you're going to find out, oh, damn, I'm spending all this time trying to be what he needs rather than focusing on being an asset to you first. And then once you master being an asset to yourself, you'll, start, you'll turn around and be like, man, now, if you are in a powerful relationship, like I said, you're a power couple. Both of you have your own light, your own missions, your own drives, your own motivation. Once you come together and you mesh, guess what? Because you're driven in your own purpose, assisting and helping a man to become better than he is because of you is easy to do because you already know what to do to make sure how to become powerful. So now all you have to do is just tell him, hey, babe, I learned this about what I was doing when I was doing my mission. When I was doing this, I figured this out. Hey, check this out. Do this. Pro let's let's troubleshoot on why this didn't work. And you'll find out like, damn, I, 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 I'm more of an asset to him. And guess what? You're, you're not feeling insecure. Nobody, no other woman is, is an issue or a concern for you. Because why? Well, because you are balanced in your self-loving. You have mastered your feelings. That's very, very important. If you're mastering your, your feelings, you're good. Listen, if you don't know, I'm a wisdom coach. I coach people on stuff about self-loving. I tell everybody solo, S-O-L-O, -O, shine on loving oneself. That is vital in any relationship, especially the one with yourself. Secondly, I, have, I do have a course called Mastering Your, your Feelings. If you want to take the course, I will drop the link in this in this. Um, live so you guys can go over there and take the course listen it's never too late to learn to do better to become better to focus on you this is the prime time while we are in this uh, quarantine to really focus on well how can i be better because once i'm able to get back out and do and be around family and be around kids and be around women and be around men i can become i can be in their presence a different version and a more improved version of myself and now when I'm in their presence, they're not going to get enough of me because now I'm telling them something that I, I learned about myself. Take my course called Mastering Your Feelings. I'm telling you, it's key. It helps you to understand that if you are not mastering your feelings, whether you're in a relationship or not, once you get in a relationship, you not mastering your feelings will have so much havoc and, 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 and hell on your relationship than you can ever imagine. Okay, guys, so listen, make sure you share this video, tag your friends, um, go over to my YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. I also have another uh, ch uh, YouTube channel called Teachable Moments. Um, I am going to be posting a premiere today at 12 noon of a video diary that I did about why women seem to pull out affections for men why is this happening so you want to check that out also it's on youtube um the premiere will be at at, at 12 o'clock it is a video diary so it's a pictorial and it is my voice over expressing why we as women can get into a mode of pulling out affections on our men um and so i i love for women and men to take a look at it it's very important to pay attention to why this happens and uh, also figure out a way for men to know that if that is happening, what to do in that case. All right, guys, I'm going to finish this cucumber salad. I'm going to get to work. I hope I help somebody today. Share this video. I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Bye, guys.